In this video, we're going to take a look at delta maths factor by grouping. And we're going to look at two skills. We're going to look at the one that just does factoring by grouping, and the second one that is factoring by grouping and then expects you to solve the equation uh, after you've done the factoring. So let's just start with the, the one that just does factoring by grouping. And we're just going to kind of talk our way through this, and hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. So the way you factor by grouping is you consider the first two terms and the last two terms. You find the greatest common factor between those two and divide it out. And then ideally, if factor by grouping works uh, for the way it's set up, if it's set up correctly, it should end up with a common binomial in the first and second term. Now that's a bit confusing. Let me kind of show you what I mean. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and group the first two parts and the last two parts. Now look, this plus five, uh, or the plus we're going to put with this 25x minus 100. Now, be careful. I know I've grouped with, with parentheses, which that would imply multiplication, but I don't want you to think about multiplication here. We're just, we're just thinking first two terms, last two terms. So that's how I'm grouping it. Don't, don't think that now we're going to multiply them together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find the greatest common factor of the first two terms. So I've got the x cubed, the 4x squared. What is the greatest common factor that I could pull out of there? Well, I could pull an x squared out, right? So I could think of that first term as x squared. So let's x cubed divided by x squared would be x minus. Okay, do you see how we pulled the x squared out of the first two terms? Now let's look at the last two terms. And we're going to put a plus in between here. Um, and let's think about what I could factor out of the last two terms. So I notice I've got a 25 that I can factor out of both. And I get x minus um, 100 divided by 25. That's going to be 4. Now, notice something here that is interesting, okay? Notice that the x plus 4, and, or the x minus 4, and the x minus 4 match. So then what would, do we do? We take both of the x plus, or x minus 4s, and we factor those out. And so you end up with something like this. If I divide both of these terms by x minus 4, what do I have left over? I have x squared plus 25. That's what I have left over. And then x minus 4. So notice I kind of take the greatest common factor out of both. Ideally, I'm going to be left with two matching binomials. Those matching binomials, I'll factor those out, and then that should get me to my solution. So let's go ahead and type this in. x squared plus 25, and then x minus All right, let's go ahead and try that. All right, and there we go. And they show you exactly how to do that. You factor out the first, the GCF out of both of them, and then factor out the X minus four. So it's a clever little way for you to um, take these problems and um, factor them. Now, let me show you the second skill. Second skill is very similar to the first one. We're going to factor them out. But once I factor them out, then I'm going to go ahead and use my factored pairs to solve for the equation. So let's go ahead and do this. This is going to be just like last time. So I'm going to take the first two groups and take the last two groups. So I get uh, x squared times 4x. This x squared is my GCF here. What is the biggest thing I can pull out of both of those? I can't pull the 4 or the 5 out, but I can pull the x squared out. So I've got 4x plus 5 plus 36 plus 45. Uh, let's see, I could factor out, what, a 9 out of both of those? So I've got 9, and I should get 4x plus 5, and I do. Okay, and that's a quick way to check. If you don't get the same... Uh, binomial in the parentheses, it means that you probably didn't factor out one of them completely. Like if I factored a 3 out of this, this set right here, I would end up with 12x plus uh, 15, but that doesn't match my 4x plus 5. So you should have matching binomials when you're done. All right, so let's, let's continue this. So I get x squared plus 9 times 4x plus 5, that's equal to 0. All right, so now that I have it equal to zero, I still need to do what we've done in the past. I need to solve this. So I'm gonna set the x squared plus nine equal to zero. Let me change color so I'm doing something different here. So I've got x squared plus nine is equal to zero, and I get four x plus five is equal to zero. So the four x plus five equal to zero, I subtract five, divide by four. So that should get me negative five fourths. 
okay, and put a comma in between, or you can hit this plus sign to add more solutions. So there's one. Now let's look at this one over here. I've got x squared, uh, x squared is equal to negative nine. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative nine or plus or minus three i. Remember the square root of nine is three, the square root of a negative is i. So um, over here, you could do these as separate ones. I'll just do them together. I get three i. All right, so it's taking our solving that we've done in the past and it's combining with this factor by group. Let's go ahead and submit this answer. Okay. All right, and it walks you through. Again, you can always hit the show. Um, you, can, you can always hit the problem or the uh, watch the help video. There's also a show solution button if you want to see how the solution works. So you can always check those things out. So you're going to use your factor by grouping. You factor out the first two terms, the last two terms, um, and then you go from there. So one thing, let's, let's look at this. This is uh, kind of interesting. Let's look at one more factor by grouping. We won't go the whole way here, but I think this is gonna be helpful for us to see. So this first set, I pull out an x squared, right? x squared, I got two x minus one, okay? Now notice, I've got negative eight plus four. Now look at the terms, the, the terms here. I've got a positive and then a negative. Here I've got a negative and then a positive. So what I'm going to do to fix that, when you, if you run into a problem like this, is let's just factor out a negative number. So let's factor out a negative four, so minus four, and then that's gonna give me positive two x minus one, okay? So in that case, when you've got a negative, especially when this third term is negative, be on the lookout that you might have some positive negative stuff going on and just make sure, if I had just factored out a positive four, then this would have been negative two plus one in the second binomial, which doesn't match my original binomial. So just be on the lookout for that. But all of this, again, hopefully this is some review. We've seen this before, um, but if not, you know, it's good practice um, and it is something pretty foundational to your future in mathematics. So hopefully this is helpful, but this wraps up our video on factoring by grouping in Delta Math.